had uh, cancer. I got breast cancer. That's 18 years ago, 18 years cancer free. And while I was going through the treatments, I used cannabis instead of uh, painkillers, antidepressants, you know, something for my appetite, something to take care of my body when the other pills, you know, all the pills that they can give you, they said, well, here's all the pills you're going to need. And I said, let me try cannabis first. And cannabis uh, gave me an appetite. So I was, a, I was able to stay out of the hospital because I, I had a, I was eating. Uh, it kept me from being depressed and it really opened my mind. Hmm. And I started thinking, this is good stuff. And I, and I kept following that um, trail until I found myself in an ayahuasca ceremony. Well, as I was having these mind-opening, life-changing experiences, I had a teenage son who was kind of on the opposite path. He was, he, um, he, he, he kind of always had a hard time in life. He sort of believed the worst in people and the worst in himself. And I could see it just kind of this downward trajectory. And then his one love of life was snowboarding and he loved it and loved it, was practicing with the Aspen snowboard team and he broke his ankle. And it ended his hopes of becoming a professional snowboarder and it sent him into great depression and he was prescribed opioids for the pain. And once that happened to him, he started going down that path, it became you know, there was lies, there was, and I just saw in the matter of four years a life deteriorate no matter what I did, it, you know, no matter what anyone else did. It was his choices, this, the, um, you know, the opioids just really do a number on a human being. And he was not able to ever get out from under it and he passed away in 2020. You, you get prescribed opioids, um, eventually the doctor's not going to prescribe them anymore. So you have to go look for them on the black market and then that's going to be expensive. Well, what's a little less expensive is heroin. Okay, this is all right. Well, I, you know, he, my son was always like, well, I'm never gonna put anything on, I'm never gonna do needles. And of course, then the next thing I know, he's, you know, he's doing heroin. Then the heroin gets too expensive and fentanyl is the cheapest. And once you start fentanyl, there's, you have about a week and it will take your life. I have seen um, heroin addicts that uh, you know used ayahuasca, and boom, it was gone. Part of what the Etheridge Foundation, another study other than this one at, at USANA that we're doing, is um, there's an African root called iboga, and ibogaine is the um, medicine they make from it. And Spain is doing research because they have they they would put they will offer their heroin addicts methadone, but then they're on methadone for 15 or 20 years, and so they're trying to find an, an alternative to get the people off of methadone. One series of um, ibogaine, and not only did they quit methadone, but they quit smoking and drinking, and it totally changed your life. Mm -hmm. Now, I know here at USONA, they are, they're working to try to figure out, look, is it the plant or is it the experience? Is it the chemical or is it the experience? And you know, I think, I don't know if you're going to ever be able to, you know, pull those two apart, but it's definitely, it's, it can be a life changing. It can, you can change your mind and that can change your life. I, the, believe me, in my heart, I wished anything had been available for my son, you know, to legally do. And, and um, yes, I, my hope is that within the next few years, there is something that is recognized by our, our government, is recognized by the, the medical world, that is, an, that is an alternative, that is something that we can do to help because there are hundreds and thousands of people and families that are affected by this every single day.